Oh, let's just take a deep breath. Did you even notice that? Were you present with it? Mindful living, mindful loving. Moment by moment. I could stand up here for the next 20 or 30 minutes and just read all kinds of statistics to you about the power of mindfulness. It truly has gone viral in so many ways. John Kabat-Zinn, a pioneer, taking the Buddhist teachings, Thich Nhat Hanh, and so many others. We could have great classes here, Chris, with some of this rich, rich history in terms of the tools that we can use to navigate the journeys, even in the prayers that were offered. And we're all in a place. We're in this place, and then we're in this place, and we're in the next place. And when Matt shared even what the doctor said to him in that moment, three to six months, how many times have you had something in your life, be it a diagnosis or something else that happened that just took your breath? away and you found yourself perhaps in your humanness going oh my god now what John Kabat-Zinn so many other pioneers in mindfulness meditation offering you an opportunity offering you a tool that is so powerful to bring you to this moment now knowing that it truly is all there is and I'm not saying it's easy because it isn't. To be able to say, can I accept this moment right now? It's easy when stuff is great. We can say, yeah, bring it on. I'm open to it. But when things stop us in our tracks, we have a tendency to do this. Or we run as fast as we can to get away from it. Can we accept what's happening in that moment I was listening to a meditation the other day. For those of you who are familiar, there's a, an app called Insight Timer. And you can put it on your phone, and there's all kinds of meditations. And there's a great one on there by Eckhart Tolle, actually. And it's about true awareness. And in that, he reminds us, in a moment, when something is happening or thought crosses through your mind, if we can accept what is happening, It'll move on. It's energy. But as soon as we start to fight it and push against it, guess what? It's got us. It has us in that moment. So mindfulness is a way to be able to say to yourself, I'm just going to notice. And that's truly the definition of mindfulness, is being able to observe, being able to notice what is happening moment by moment, within you, outside of you, without judgment, without an agenda. We all have muscles, and to me the muscle of mindfulness is one that I think, it's, it's kind of like if you don't use it, you lose it, or perhaps you never knew that you had one. So to be able to say, you know what, I choose to exercise my muscle of mindfulness to grow it and to strengthen it so that at any moment I can just go, okay, I'm so aware of what's happening and I can make another choice. I think the theme that Melanie has been focusing on in Sydney is active spirituality. So to me, we can talk about all the things that we do or that we're aspiring to, but to put them into practice truly is where the magic and the miracles begin to unfold. So mindfulness is truly magical. So I ask the question, are you mindful? Would you say you're mindful or are you mindless? Or perhaps you have a mind full of a mess. And now what they say, a hot mess. That's, I think, the phrase that's going around. Sometimes I'm like, what does that mean? But what is happening within you? Buddha says there are two mistakes one can make along the road to truth. Not going all the way and not starting. So on your path, what are you doing? 
Are you present with every step you take, whatever direction it's going? Whether you're going back, whether you're going forward, whether you're going sideways, and can you just accept it as it is and say, this is just where I am? And another part of you to be able to open up to perhaps knowing what it is you're anchored into, what beliefs you're anchored into, what is your truth? I don't have a clue what that is. But do you know what that is for you? The reading that Joan gave this morning by Eckhart Tolle, what we know for sure is change is a constant. Life means constant and inevitable change. Sometimes that change takes the form of dust accumulating bit by bit on a bookshelf. And at other times, change manifests itself as a major life transition. That's often what we share in prayer time with Sydney and what Melanie speak. A major life transition. Even Asha talking about her neck. That's huge. Oh my goodness. In fact, yesterday I was aware that 17, 18 years ago I was in a car accident at the Barrett Parkway in I-75 and I was rear-ended. And I'll never forget the day, September 19, when the ambulance came and took me to Kempstone Hospital. And my neck and my shoulders, I had bilateral neuropathy for a year and a half. I could not use my hands. And as a massage therapist, that's not a good thing. <laughs> but it was one of those bumps in the road, pebble in your shoe, whatever you want to call it. And I was aware of mindfulness, maybe bitsy, bitsy bit. But to be able to look back and say, wow, what have I learned on that journey? Where am I right now? Because this moment now is where I can say, I am going to, what? Become aware of my breath. I'm going to become more conscious. Not of just the thoughts that are passing through me. That's like in the foreground. What is happening in the background of your life? in that space of pure awareness and consciousness and the oneness. That's why I wanted to integrate some sound today into my talk. Because sound doesn't have an agenda. The gong, it's just a gong. A bowl is a bowl. And when it expresses itself in vibration and sound, Believe it or not, and I said, I have all kinds of research to substantiate what I'm offering you today. And it's okay if you believe it or not. I'm, I don't have an agenda around it. I'm just offering it to you for you to be aware that, yes, you are in this physical body. And all the cells in your body, they already know wholeness. They already know that. That's their blueprint. And perhaps with all the other bits of confusion and chaos that have gone on, and the cells are like, oh my gosh, I don't know what it is I'm supposed to do. One thing about sound and vibration and frequency, it knows where to go. It just is. And the cells in your body, your physical beingness, if you will, knows what it needs. This is what I call sound nourishment. Because your cells go, oh, I recognize that. Wow, it's been a long time. And you don't have to do anything except say, hey, perhaps I'm open to just being in this now moment. And knowing that I deserve this. We get hung up in that sometimes too. Do I really deserve this? There are times in life when change seems to come slowly. Just as there are times when change seems to strike like lightning. No matter how busy or dull life seems at present, change that is mindfully observed and accepted is neither overwhelming nor boring. It is accepted as integral to the beauty, nuance, and lessons inherent in being fully alive. Are you fully alive in this moment right now? Even as you hear my voice, or the sounds in this room. What is it that you're present to? What do you notice?
You may want to close your eyes. This is you getting to know yourself a little bit better as I just continue to weave in sounds, be it my voice, these sacred sound instruments. to this moment right now. Knowing and trusting. That all that is offered is for my best and highest. muscle of mindfulness to be nourished. Your thoughts just like clouds passing through the sky in a beautiful day. Appreciating all that they are and just allowing them to float by. my physical body. Perhaps I'm breathing through my nose. Perhaps I'm breathing through my mouth. Every cell in my body right now
recognizes and already knows what it needs. In this moment, miracles are unfolding. I'm becoming more and more aware of all that I am. As I continue on the journey of my life, I become more present each moment. And I notice when something is upsetting to me. And in that moment, I recognize that I have a choice. physical body begins to release chemicals and hormones that allow me to be more relaxed and more present. My choices are more loving for myself and for others. I find I have clarity where there was confusion chaos. I begin to walk my path with a clearer intention of peace. Compassion. Come to be more aware of the truth of all that I am. Just like a butterfly in a cocoon, this energy of mindfulness and living in the moment surrounds me. And I have all that I need, just like the butterfly within that cocoon has all that it needs to emerge and to become its divine expression. Just breathe. Just notice 
all that is being offered to you in this moment. Where are you right now? Perhaps these sounds are transporting you somewhere magical and mystical. Perhaps they don't sound good to you at all. Honor your experience as you become more mindful of your responses, of the story that you may already have about something. Is it a story that supports you and nourishes you? Is it one that exhausts and drains you? Just notice. Breathing in, a long, slow, deep breath. Perhaps you have found a rhythm right now that resonates with you. Let it go. Whatever's there that is ready to fall away. Notice the energy in this space within you and around and through you. I breathe in and my body is smiling back at me. So grateful for this nourishment. The choice to become present to your life, however busy it feels, naturally allows you to slow down and savor the present moment in a brand new way. So I invite you now just to gently bring yourself back if you left and went anywhere, or if you still So wherever you are is absolutely perfect.
Notice what is happening for you right now. And know, again, right where you are, is so perfect. the B note, it's your crown chakra. So I invite you to allow your crown chakra to open wide. Receiving this energy. Open to all that spirit is offering you this morning. When you find yourself rushing about from task to task, event to event, and goal to goal, do you ever pause to honestly ask yourself what the fuss and hurry are really about? Being still, even for brief moments, means sitting with yourself. If you feel too busy for a few minutes of calm connection with yourself, it is worthwhile to ask yourself, what are you avoiding? Sometimes being with ourselves is not an easy thing to do. It's like, oh my goodness, I want to get away from myself. I know sometimes I want to run from me. Because I'm like, oh my, now what? When you take the time to honestly look at how you are living your life, it becomes increasingly simple to notice the distinction between activities that have been constructed to distract you from yourself and others versus activities that bring deeper connection with yourself and others. It is easy to get caught up in the chatter of the mind and allow those thoughts to become convincing, paralyzing, or overwhelming. Thoughts are simply thoughts. Like I said, they're like the foreground. And we want, at least I do, and perhaps you, you all do too, to be in that place of pure consciousness and awareness where life is so different, it's so divine. Thoughts are simply thoughts, not facts. You don't need to become fused to your thoughts, which take you away from experiencing the richness of this present moment. A mind that is peaceful, awake, and accepting observes the present moment without becoming lost in it. Isn't that amazing? The ability that you have in any moment to create it differently and to exercise that muscle of mindfulness. Before I get ready to close, I just wanted to share with you that what's called MBSR, which is Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction, which is what John Kabat-Zinn created from the Buddhist teachings that I offered earlier, is so heavily researched. And there are so many cases and so many facts and figures to substantiate the power of mindfulness. Health. Many of the major medical centers throughout the country and throughout the world, but especially the United States and our Western medical model, to be able to say, oh my goodness, absolutely. We are open to that. One of the biggest things that mindfulness does, as does sound, because there's so much research, Edgar Casey, many, many years ago, spoke about the power of sound to really understand when we are stressed out, we cannot truly operate from that place and to have an outcome that we desire. And when our body goes out of that fight or flight and, and we're in this place of just bathing ourselves, and that's what a gong bath does, a sound bath, it just will bathe you in this pure, pristine energy Stress has been demonstrated to have negative effects on the body. Anybody else in here ever get stressed out once in a while, perhaps? Okay? Including the brain. And we've been talking about some of the prayers here today. I know I'm going to be involved in a case study coming up for six weeks about dementia. 
and I'm going to be going to two personal care homes with some sound equipment. It won't be these things, but it's another thing that I'm involved in as a Cheryl that the research on it is astounding. So we may be looking for people to do our own case study with this particular thing because the results are happening with dementia. It's mind-blowing. So with PTSD, autism, uh, war vets have come back, and mindfulness-based stress reduction, it's just mind-blowing. It truly is. And what happens in the body, if you understand anything about telomeres, I'm not going to get into all the physiological component, but telomeres shorten and telomerase levels decrease more rapidly, resulting in, and this is all you need to hear, accelerated cell aging. That's what happens. So detrimental effects, we're talking about stress again. On the prefrontal cortex functioning, immune system, psychological stress, increased depression. And in the workplace, now so many companies and corporations are bringing mindfulness into the corporation. There's less absenteeism, more productivity, personal relationships, at work and at home. It's astounding. So when I come here with this stuff and, and we think it might be all woo-woo meditation and I'm going to take you on a journey to find your spirit animal, which I do that as well, <laughs> that I'm just saying, it's here, folks. It is already here. Asha and the band, every week, they offer beautiful sound for you to catch the wave. Get it? Catch that wave and ride it. Ride it into a place of wholeness and well-being. Even your voice. Even chanting, Om. Do you know how powerful that is? You have a voice. Open up that throat chakra and speak your truth, become mindful of what you're saying and where you're coming from when you're saying it. Are you just rattling on? Or are you saying something that is of substance and grounded in something that you know in the core of you is the absolute? Next time I see you guys, I wanna have you come up and show me your mindfulness muscle. All right? All right, let me just close couple more notes and I just want to say thank you in advance. Normally there's a meditation afterwards so what I'm going to do is just move into a little bit more of this and then we will move on with the rest of the service. And I could have just brought the gong. I have a few more things at home. I have a bigger gong actually but, but I want it and it's really when you put it all together and perhaps and also this particular gong is to the pitch of C. Okay? And that's the root chakra. And like I said, this particular bowl is a bee, which is a crown. So we got you covered. Generations that have seven metals in them, and I checked all the frequencies of them, so they don't hold a pure note, a pure tone. And this is also a 432 hertz bowl, if you know anything about vibration. So what I'm saying to you is, there are many things that you can create in your life, and they're available to you. So I invite you just for another two or three minutes, just to allow yourself to be bathed. Just be bathed and allow yourself to receive it, because that's where we get hung up. Just allow yourself to receive it.
looking at the beauty of this day, of this moment, of now. Love yourself. Be mindful. 